Hi there, welcome back. In this chapter, what we want to do is study motion in two dimensions. The first example, the first case that we want to study is the simplest one, which is motion in two dimensions, but along a straight line. So what I have here is a little toy car that I'm going to uh, race down this track that you see. And uh, we're going we're gonna to analyze that motion and define some quantities uh, in the same spirit that we did when we studied one-dimensional motion. So let me just quickly show you that. Just the car racing down the track. Now to study this motion, the first thing that we want to do is set up a system of coordinates. So we have the x-axis running along the horizontal, the y-axis vertical, and we have set up some scale there. Now we are going to choose arbitrarily a point where we say that time is equal to zero. T equals zero is the starting of the time. So at that point, when the car is at this location, we're going to draw a vector that goes from the origin of the system of coordinates that we chose to the point, to the location of the car at that specific time. So that's the blue vector that I'm calling R at t equals zero. If we choose a different time, say 0.1 seconds later, then the car is going to be at a different location on the track and we can specify that location by drawing a vector again from the origin to the location of the car at that time. We're going to call that vector r at t equals 0.1 seconds. We can draw a third vector at a different time and a fourth vector. These vectors completely specify the position of the car at different times, at the specified times. The components of these vectors, it's uh, useful to write them down. So we're going to write the vector with two components, the x and the y. The x for r0 is 20, the y is 70. For the vector 0.1, you can see that the x component is 60, the y component is 50. For the position at t equals 0.2, you can see that the x look, uh, position is 100 and the y is 30. This is all in centimeters. And for the vector at t equals 0 0.3, it has components x 140 centimeters and y 10 centimeters. Let's call these points a, b, c, and d. So let's talk about the vector displacement, displacement between two points here between points A and B, we're going to define the vector displacement as being the position of the, the vector location at B minus the location at A. So we have the components there, these, these are the vectors R at t equals 0 0.1 and R at 0. The first one with components 60, 50. The second one with components 20, 70. So if we take the difference between these two vectors, as we learn, we take the difference of the x components and the difference of the y components, that will be 40 and minus 20. The vector looks like this, 40 for the x, minus 20 for the y, and the vector points diagonally in a southeast direction. That vector can be drawn on the plot as being a vector that goes from A to B. The displacement vector RAB is a vector that points from A to B. As you can see from the mathematical relationship, from the way we define them, the vector at t equals 0 plus the displacement vector is equal to the vector at t equals 0 0.1. According to the way we add vectors, that's exactly what we, what we do. That's exactly how the vectors look. You start with the first vector, then you put the second vector with its tail at the head of the previous one, and the sum of those two vectors, so r0 plus delta r, will be the vector that goes from the tail of r0 to the head of delta r. That's the vector, as you can see, r at t equals 0 0.1. So the displacement vector, notice that its vector defines as the difference between the position of the object at the later time minus the position of the object at the earlier time. And that vector is a vector that goes from the initial position to the final position. This we call the vector displacement. Now we can calculate the vector displacement for any other 
points along the trajectory, if we try using B and C, the displacement between B and C will be the position at the later time, C, minus the position at the earlier time, B. The difference between those two vectors, which is the vector at t equals 0 0.2, minus the vector at 0 0.1. From the components that we have on the upper left of the screen, you have first one is 130, and the second one is 60, 50. Taking the difference, 100 minus 60, that's 40, and 30 minus 50 is minus 20. That vector looks like that. And once again, it should go from the earlier position, B, to the later position, C. That's the vector displacement between B and C. And finally, if we want to calculate the displacement between C and D, we proceed in the same fashion and we will get, you can check this, that you get the same result, 40 for the X minus 20 for the Y. Using the displacement vector, we can define the average velocity between points A and B by taking the displacement vector and dividing it by the time lapse, or the time lapse. That's delta T A B, where delta T A B is uh, the time at B minus the time at A. So if we take that, knowing that our displacement vector between A and B is 40 minus 20, we divide that vector component by component, we divide it by 0 0.1, which means that you take the first number, and let's convert that to meters, so 40 centimeters is 0 0.4 meters, divided by 0 0.1 seconds, that's the x component of the average velocity vector. The y component will be minus 0 0.2 meters divided by 0 0.1 seconds. So component by component, the average velocity vector is 4 meters per second, minus 2 meters per second. And again, it's a vector that points in that direction, which is the same as the direction of the displacement vector. Since all we've done is take the displacement vector and divide it by 0 0.1 seconds, you would expect the vector to be in the same direction. So the average velocity between A and B and the average velocity between B and C, because this is an example where we assume that the velocity of the car was constant, constant speed down the track, then those average velocity vectors uh, are the same. So, so far we have obtained that the average velocity at those different points between the different points A, B, C, and D is 4 minus 2 meters per second, the same. If this is, if the motion of the object is uniform motion, and this is the definition, if the object is moved with constant velocity down the track, then it would be true that the average velocity between any two points will be the same number. It's a constant. So we're gonna we can write it as the average velocity between points i and j is a constant vector with two components. So we're just gonna call that vector the velocity. It actually is the instantaneous velocity of the object the average velocity for uniform motion coincides with the instantaneous velocity. The speed can be defined in two or three dimensions as the magnitude of the velocity vector. So you would take the x component, square it, plus the y component, square it. If there is a z component, you will take that, square it, add it to the previous ones, and take the square root of the whole thing. And that is the number that we call the speed. It would always be a positive number, and it is because it's just a number, is obviously a scalar quantity, as opposed to velocity, which is a vector quantity with different components. Two components in two dimensions, three components in three dimensions. Now, since for uniform motion, the average velocity between any two points is constant, is the same, then uh, we can choose two points uh, that we're going to call the initial and the final points, and the velocity would be can be obtained by taking the displacement between the initial and the final divided by the time difference. So the displacement between the initial location and the final location, whichever they might be, can be found by taking the velocity vector, which is a constant vector, and multiplying it by the time difference. So if you choose uh, this blue vector to be the initial 
position vector and this is the final position vector then the connection between those two vectors is that the velocity times delta t is a vector that goes from the initial to the final location again from the equation delta r i f which is the position at the final location minus the position at the initial location the difference between them is v times delta t then the position at the final location is equal to the position at the initial location plus the velocity vector times delta t so no matter what point in time you choose if you have the initial velocity vector and you have the velocity vector it's a matter of multiplying the velocity vector times delta t and adding that to the initial position vector that will give you the final location of the object at whatever time you choose delta t is of course the difference in time between the final and the initial now let's practice these ideas by uh, doing a calculation of the final position of the car that you saw in the movie so we know that the equation that tells us the final location in terms of the initial position and the velocity is rf equals ri plus v delta t we also know that the initial location vector is 20 for the x component and 70 for the y component we also know that the velocity vector as we calculated before is 4 meters per second in the x direction and minus 2 meters per second in the y direction so try to find for t equal 3 seconds what is the what is the x component and the y component of the location the position vector of the car where is the car going to be at t equal 3 seconds if at t equal 0 the uh, car was at the location specified by r sub i please calculate this and type your answer in owl space